for joining us for today's uh, C2 Smart webinar. My name is John Patinos. I'm a project manager at the C2 Smart Center, a US DOT designated tier one university transportation research center tasked with leveraging recent advances in big data and technology to solve today's most pressing urban mobility challenges. Just a few notes to start. We'll be recording this uh, session, as you might've seen, and uploading it to the C2 Smart Center YouTube channel. Um, questions make the webinar more exciting for me, you, and the presenters. So I want to encourage you to do, uh, participate through posing uh, questions uh, one of two ways. Either you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom window, or you can raise your hand. I'll unmute you and I'll allow you to ask your question directly to our presenter. Today I'm with Yiming Li. Yiming is a doctoral candidate in the AI Force Lab, it's AI Force CE, at uh, NYU's Tandon School of Engineering. His research interests are in robot vision and learning with applications in cyber physical systems, autonomous driving, and human robot interaction. Uh, most specifically, he's interested in collaborative and adversarial perception, egocentric vision, multimodal perception, and embodied AI. His works have been published in a number of top tier conferences, including NeurIPS, CVPR, ICCV, ICRA, and IROS, a lot of acronyms. And uh, he's, uh, during his, his experience in his doctoral program, he's been able to visit the Mars Lab in the Institute for Interdisciplinary Information Sciences at Tsinghua University, Media Brain Group in the School of Electronic Information and Electrical Engineering at Shanghai Zhao Tong University, and the Institute for AI Industry Research at Tsinghua University. I guess without further ado, Yiming, why don't you take it away? Hey, thank you. Let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yep, yep, perfect. Okay, so let's start. Hi everyone, thanks for coming to today's webinar. And I'm Imi, a PhD candidate at AI Force Lab at NYU. And today we are going to uh, discuss the collaborative and adversarial 3D perception for autonomous driving. And uh, Autonomous vehicles uh, usually rely on 3D sensors to capture the 3D measurements of its surrounding environment uh, in, in order to achieve a comprehensive understanding of the uh, environment. And uh, one, most key, uh, one most important uh, 3D sensors is LiDAR. And LiDAR, short, short is for light detection and ranging. Uh, it uses eye safe laser beams to see the world in 3D, and this can provide autonomous vehicles and accurate representations of the surveying environment. And basically, LiDAR just sends out some pulses of light which bounces off the object so that the LiDAR can determine the distance between the object and, and the LiDAR. And after getting such kind of 3D representation of the environment, and uh, the researchers usually use uh, deep learning te uh, te techniques uh, to analyze the point cloud data and design some, uh, some deep learning algorithms uh, to capture, uh, to, uh, to process the capture the point cloud data in order to achieve the uh, comprehensive understanding of the environment. And today we are going to discuss one of the most important perception tasks uh, called 3D object detection. So what's the 3D object detection? And basically it just uh, involves recognizing and determining the 3D information of some objects. Uh, some interested objects, for example, the vehicles, right? And uh, basically, you can uh, you can understand the three D object detection. Like uh, we need to localize and uh, we need to localize and draw some three D bounding box given some uh, given some measurements. For example, the left figure shows that we need to localize the vehicles uh, on, on one uh, on a single image. You can see that we draw several bounding box, uh, which is composed of the centers uh, coordinate and the orientation of the bounding box and also the size of the bounding box. And also uh, the, here the right figure denotes that we need to localize the 3D objects given a single scan. And uh, you can see that uh, we need to, uh, we, we, only, we, we, only, we are only giving a 3D point cloud data and we need to uh, localize these, these objects. And so today we are going to focus on the uh, LiDAR-based 3D of the detection, uh, because uh, camera for camera images, we will lose the depth information. And so for the LiDAR-based 3D detection, the performance uh, usually uh, is really better than the camera-based of that detection. And to process such kind of irregular data, and for point, point cloud, the basic understanding is that 
uh, it is a set of points. And uh, for example, given uh, if one uh, scene level point cloud has n points, then, then it will be a n multiply three matrix. And also uh, the each row denotes the x, y, z position of each point. Mm, and uh, we need to process such kind of irregular data. And there are several challenges in processing such kind of data with deep learning techniques. Uh, the first one is data sparsity. And this is because of the limited sensing capability of the 3D LiDAR. So uh, they are usually, they are usually sparse measurements when the object is far away from the LiDAR. You can see that here, this point denotes the, uh, denotes the eagle vehicle. And you can see that this object is quite far, far away from the LiDAR. So uh, there will be fewer uh, measurements compared with objects which is closer to the LiDAR. So oh. if we have very scarce, very sparse information on that object, so uh, the algorithm will be, uh, it, it is quite challenging for algorithms to localize such kind of uh, object. And the second challenge is uh, partial or full occlusion because of the, uh, this, this challenge is because of the uh, geom geometric relationship. Uh, for example, here, the red, uh, the, the, the bounding box with the red dots uh, denotes, uh, denotes an occluded, and this, is, uh, this object is occluded by this yellow object. And so due to the occlusion, there will be also uh, sparse measurements, uh, sparse or fewer measurements of that object, and, or, or even sometimes uh, this object is fully occluded uh, by, by, the other, uh, by, by the other vehicles. And the third challenge is uh, the motion distortion. Uh, this, this is because of the uh, uh, LiDAR's property, because uh, LiDAR is rotating uh, during the uh, measurement, uh, measurement capture. And so, uh, and the LiDAR, which is attached to the autonomous vehicles, uh, is still is still moving when it uh, when it rotates. So the uh, different measurements will be captured at different time steps and also at different locations. So these measurements uh, actually need to be uh, synchronized, the unified coordinate. If uh, if we do not have accurate poles, uh, then th this will introduce the motion distortion. So with this uh, these challenges, then today I will. Today I will show you how we design uh, novel deep learning algorithms uh, to process such kind of 3D point cloud data in order to achieve a robust 3D perception. And today I'm going to uh, discuss from two aspects. The first one is collaborative. And I will going to introduce our uh, works uh, published in Europe 2021, which named as Learning Distilled Collaboration Graph for Multi-Agent Perception. And in this work, we our main uh, contribution is we propose a, a collaboration graph with matrix validate weight. And we also propose a new learning st strategy, which is uh, based on the knowledge distillation to learn such kind of uh, graph. So with such kind of graph, the agent, uh, the ego vehicle could understand which part, which spatial range need, uh, need the information and which spatial range uh, has no uh, with noisy information need to be re repressed. And our second uh, uh, second uh, work is uh, from the adver adversarial perspective. And in this work uh, named as fully light of perception by adversarial trajectory perturbation, we propose, uh, we propose a trajectory-based adversarial attack frame framework against a light based perception. And we, we, uh, we revealed an overlooked uh, vulnerability which lies in the motion, compa uh, motion composition process and we also show that a very imperceptible perturbation in trajectory will hurt the uh, 3D of detection performance. Okay, now let's start with the first one, uh, the collaborative, collaborative, collaborative part. As I mentioned before, the single robot perception, uh, although it has been widely studied and various algorithms have been proposed uh, to process that kind of, kind of data, uh, then, uh, however, uh, the long range issue uh, is uh, is very, very challenging due to the sparse measurements uh, at a long distance, and also there is uh, frequent occlusions uh, due to the uh, due to the individual viewpoints. Here, you can see that in the right figure, uh, the ego vehicle tries to perceive the this person. However, due to the occlusion caused by this green vehicle, it is hardly to 
uh, it is very uh, very very challenging for it to perceive this uh, this person. However, with with such kind of uh, vehicle to vehicle collaboration, you can see that the top uh, part has a white vehicle and it can perceive the person better. And so that after such such kind of message uh, message uh, sharing, then uh, the 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 perception robustness could be improved. So. Uh, as I just said, the multi-robot perception has been proposed uh, to solve the issues of long-range uh, long perception and the frequent occlusions. And according to the estimation of the US Department of Transportation, if a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle system were implemented, there will be around 440,000 fuel crashes every year. And there, uh, there are uh, two main advantages for the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle system. And the first one is there will be more viewpoints. Uh, so this is uh, quite useful for the perception because you will have more information, right? So the vehicle, uh, so the ego vehicle could see further, see better, and even see through occlusion. And also you have more computational resources uh, in, in your whole perception system. And this will also improve the efficiency of the whole perception system. And to, uh, to design such kind of uh, robust uh, collaborative perception framework, they are several questions to be answered. The first one is uh, what information should be transmitted, right? Uh, and also the second one is how the ego vehicle aggregates the information from the other neighboring agents uh, efficiently and effectively. As for the first question, there are several solutions. Uh, no, for example, the, fir uh, the, the first one is early collaboration. Uh, some researchers just aggregate all the raw point cloud data in the Euclidean space and then start to process that kind of uh, aggregated data. And such, such kind of early collaboration has no information loss, so the performance is, is very good. However, uh, the communication bandwidth is quite expensive because generally for a same level point cloud, uh, it has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of point, points and this will, this will lead to the very expensive communication bandwidth. And also some researchers propose uh, late collaboration, which is just a uh, fuse output of each vehicle. However, uh, although this uh, kind of method has a cheaper communication bandwidth, however, uh, each, uh, each vehicle with its own individual viewpoint cannot uh, have a, a very good perception results. Also, this leads to the uh, unreliable results because we just, uh, here we just fuse uh, several outputs from different uh, from different uh, uh, individual uh, agents, and each each individual agents has unreliable results, and the fusion of unreliable results cannot result in a robust perception performance. And recently, deep learning uh, has been widely applied in the three uh, D computer vision, and so researchers uh, in the collaborative perception direction, and they try to think about how to utilize. Uh, the deep learning, uh, deep, deep learning in, in, in this collaborative perception setting. And they propose uh, instead of uh, fusing the, uh, the early, the, the raw data or fusing the uh, output, uh, instead of fusing the input and fusing the output, they propose to fuse the intermediate uh, representations of a neural network. Uh, so that uh, this, this results in uh, two kinds of advantages. The first one is uh, it, it, uh, this representation is compact and easy to compress so that it, this can help us to uh, reduce the communication bandwidth. The second performance, is, uh, second advantage is that here uh, now we are, we are still having some contextual information, right? And this can also, uh, if, if we have a very, uh, very well-designed uh, communication modules, then these uh, representations can help us uh, to achieve the comparable performance with the uh, uh, input-based fusion, but, uh, but with very, very low uh, communication bandwidth. So the challenge is now how to design a collaboration strategy in the high dimensional uh, feature space. And researchers uh, have proposed several, uh, several uh, kinds of strategies. For example, the Uber Autonomous Driving Group uh, has, has proposed to use a graph neural network to model the collaboration among different agents. And in this graph, each node denotes an ego vehicle and uh, they use graph neural message passing to propagate the information in this, uh, in this collaboration graph. 
And also several researchers proposed to use uh, attention-based mechanism to aggregate the information. Uh, for example, uh, they use uh, uh, here when, when to come, uh, who to come use the attention-based mechanism to select the collaboration partners. And basically the idea is that uh, if one agent with, uh, has uh, information which is, has a high, higher correlation score with the ego agent, and then it will be selected as a collaboration partner. And however, uh, some problems uh, still exist. For example, uh, the latency problem, uh, V2V net and when to come, who to come, they both need multiple iterations of message passing. And uh, this will introduce the latency problem. And second uh, problem is accuracy. And uh, also each, uh, each ego vehicles, their message is, uh, uh, is, uh, has a spatial resolution, right? Because uh, th this message, uh, uh, it, it, it covers a certain area. So it definitely has a spatial resolution. However, this method uh, consider a single valued age weight for message fusion. It just, uh, it just use, a, uh, use a scalar when they fuse the other agent's message. So this can not highlight the informative range uh, or repress the noisy range. And now let me start with our, let me introduce our, uh, our method. And uh, the problem definition is that we assume multiple robots are located in the same area and each robot can perceive and also collaborate with each other uh, via communication. And each robot is provided with an accurate pose. So, uh, so the robot can know where exactly they are. And our goal is now, given a certain communication bandwidth, we want to maximize the perception capability of each agent by optimizing a collaboration strategy. And uh, to solve such kind of problem, we propose a fully connected directed graph. And uh, in this graph, uh, which is to model the uh, collaboration among different agents, we propose a matrix value the age weight. And in this age weight, uh, in, this, in this age weight, uh, it can highlight the informative range. For example, agent one cannot see some kind of, uh, cannot see some pixels in it uh, because of it, uh, some occlusion reasons. However, the agent two can just uh, perceive such kind of range very well. So that it, it could uh, highlight uh, such kind of pixels uh, from, uh, when, when, when we fuse the message from agent two. And now we convert the problem of collaboration strategy optimization to the graph learning problem. And now let me introduce our collaboration graph. Uh, assume that we have multiple robots and due to the limited sensing capability of each robot, uh, each agent can only perceive its, uh, can perceive a certain size, a certain range of its surrounding. And we use the directed age and uh, which is bi-directional uh, bi uh, to model the collaboration and also our graph is fully connected. And for each node, uh, since we are focusing on intermediate collaboration and each node has an inter intermediate feature map. And here, which uh, 32 by 32 denotes the spatial, uh, spatial resolution, uh, the, the length and the width of this uh, surrounding environment. And here 256 denotes the feature dimension and also each node has its own uh, six degree of freedom pose. And our age is directed and our age weight is matrix valued. And our graph, uh, in summary, our graph is fully connected, dynamic because the, uh, each, each vehicle is moving. So our graph is dynamic and our, our graph is also post aware because we know exactly the, node, uh, the, the, the node's location. And also uh, our graph age weight is adaptive to perceptual measurements because in different uh, scenarios, uh, the, the, uh, the, the agent need to highlight the different ranges because uh, the surrounding environment is, uh, is, is changing, right? Because uh, so, so that we need to make our collaboration graph adaptive to perceptual measurements. Now let me introduce our procedures uh, for the collaboration graph. Uh, image that here, uh, agent one is an ego vehicle. Uh, and agent two to agent five are the neighboring agents. And the, now the agent one needs to aggregate the feature maps from its neighboring agents. And here, uh, this, this row denotes the original feature map. And uh, the first step is coordinate transformation because uh, each, node, uh, each agent has its own pose. 
and uh, and its feature map is defined in its own coordinates. And so the first step is that we need to synchronize the coordinates, right? So the first step is we synchronize the feature map and make these five feature maps in a unified coordinate, which is defined in the agent one's uh, coordinate. And after feature map synchronization, we need to generate the age weight for each agent. And to generate such kind of age weight, we use a convolutional neural network, which is learnable uh, uh, during the training. And our uh, learnable age weight generator takes the concatenation of the ego agent feature maps with the neighboring agents feature map and fed and fit the uh, concatenation of these two feature maps into a convolutional neural network and the output uh, matrix. And this matrix denotes the age weight. And uh, the pixels with higher value denotes, uh, with, uh, denotes that uh, this pixel is very important because agent two can see some, uh, some, uh, some elements which cannot be perceived by the agent one. And uh, for, for, some, for some pixels, uh, the agent two do not have uh, measurements, then these pixels will have a lower importance score, right? So through such kind of uh, matrix validate weight, our ego agent could highlight the informative range we are repressing the noise in range. And uh, next step is pixel-wise normalization because here we have five feature maps and we want to uh, conduct a weighted sum of these uh, five agent, uh, five feature maps from five agents. And for each pixel, uh, for each pixel, uh, it, uh, actually here each pixel denotes uh, one spatial area uh, at, uh, which is defined in the ego agents uh, coordinates. And for each pixel, we conduct a pixel-wise uh, normalization. And so that uh, the, uh, finally we can uh, conduct a, implement a weighted sum of all these five feature maps to get to the final updated feature maps. So through such, uh, through such kind of matrix value eight weight, we can uh, highlight the different pixels with different importance scores. So uh, now let me introduce our learning strategy. Uh, the intuition of our learning strategy is that uh, for early collaboration, which is based on the uh, input, uh, the raw, da raw data input fusion, if bandwidth is high, however, its performance is better because there is no information loss. And for the intermediate collaboration, although uh, the feature map is easy to compress, however, uh, there are several convolutional layers which will introduce quantization errors. Uh, so our intuition is that can we combine these two methods into a unified framework so that we can uh, we can have both of these two advantages while repress, uh, repress their own disadvantages. And we utilize a uh, knowledge distillation framework. And knowledge distillation framework is a widely used technique in machine learning and computer vision community. And the basic idea is that uh, you have a teacher model, uh, which has a lot of parameters, uh, which, is, uh, have, which has more parameters than the student network. And then during training, uh, you firstly train such kind of teacher, work, uh, teacher network with more parameters, and um, uh, this will introduce a uh, high, high computation. But after training such kind of teacher network, uh, we will fix the parameters of teacher networks and then start training the student network, which is uh, more lightweight. And so the uh, student net uh, network could, could imitate the behaviors, the, out uh, the output of the teacher network uh, in addition to the ground truth labels. So, we, we use the ideas of knowledge distillation, but we are, we are a little bit different. And here our teacher is, uh, our teacher and student uh, network has the same skill and they have same, parameter, same numbers of parameters. However, the input is different. And the teacher networks is based on early collaboration, which they just uh, fuse the raw data uh, starting uh, from the input, right? And, and our teacher network has uh, no information loss. So its performance is the best. And our student network is based on the uh, intermediate collaboration. You can see that here we first use a, uh, use a encoder to extract its features, and then we will implement collaboration uh, in the feature maps, uh, in the feature space. And so our student network is based on single view data, uh, single view data input while we implement intermediate collaboration. And during training, we will use the, uh, our teacher network, which is based on early collaboration uh, to Guide, guide the training of our intermediate collaboration so that, uh, okay, our, although we do not 
uh, implement uh, intermittent, uh, although we do not implement raw data fusion, but we can let our uh, intermittent fusion based methods to imitate, uh, to try to approach the performance of the uh, teacher's network, which is based on the uh, early fusion. That's the basic uh, intuition and uh, the, the, the technique to achieve this. Now let's see a detailed framework here. Here you can see that here the top figure denotes the uh, teacher's network and it takes the multi-view data as input. You can see that we first aggregate all these uh, point clouds from different vehicles and we get a uh, multi-view data. And then we can uh, input the, the multi-view data into our teacher networks. And here, uh, uh, please note that here the uh, this this uh, operation denotes the this BEV operation denotes the bird's eye view map voxelization for a given point cloud because it is just a set of points we need to make it into a regular uh, voxel grid right we just divide the space into several grid uh, several voxel grids and we now uh, start to count the numbers of the uh, of the of the points in in different grids if uh, if if the grid is occupied by at least one point then it is uh, equipped with uh, one. And otherwise it is equipped with a zero. Uh, so this BV uh, representation is just uh, some uh, binary uh, pseudo image. And so that we can use the 2D convolutional neural network to process such kind of uh, feature map, BV feature map. And for our pseudo network, you can see that for each individual uh, individual view point cloud, we first in, in, uh, implement a, a bird's eye view voxelization to make it as a, a pseudo image. And then we uh, input them into, uh, into our encoder uh, separately. And we can get the uh, get its corresponding feature maps. And then we use our collaboration graph, which is a fully connected directed graph uh, to, imp uh, to, to do the collaboration. And after such kind of uh, information propagation, we can uh, get our updated feature maps. And then we will uh, fit our updated feature maps into our decoder to get the final results. And this is our student network. So during training, we'll first train our teacher network, and then we will uh, use knowledge distillation to, uh, to minimize the difference between the uh, intermediate feature maps uh, from both teacher networks and student networks. Uh, basically, we we'll just try to let our students to approach the performance of, of the teacher networks. And so this kind of uh, uh, training technique could guide the, uh, our, our uh, collaboration graphs learning. And our teacher's loss is just uh, a detection loss, uh, which is, includes the classification and the regression loss of the bounding box. And our student loss uh, not only didn't, uh, includes the uh, detection loss, but also we, we, we have a knowledge desolation, the KD loss here. And we will uh, minimize, and uh, here Y denotes the uh, output and H denotes the intermediate feature maps. And we try to minimize the uh, intermediate feature maps between the students and the teachers. And the KD loss is just, uh, we just use the uh, uh, KR divergence uh, to mirror to, uh, to mirrors the difference between these two feature maps. And I will not uh, introduce the details of this loss function. But the, the basic idea is that we try to let the student network to approach the performance of the teacher. Okay, that's our, uh, that's our method. We firstly introduce our collaboration graph, which is a fully connected directed graph with a matrix validate rate. And then we uh, uh, introduce the uh, learning strategy during training uh, to learn such a collaboration graph. And now let me introduce the exper experiments. And to uh, verify our method, uh, we need a data set. However, there is no real world data sets uh, for the vehicle to vehicle collaboration, uh, vehicle to vehicle perception research. So we use uh, a color sumo call simulation to generate a data set. And we use a traffic simulator sumo to, uh, to produce a numerically uh, realistic traffic flow. And then we use the color to retrieve the sensor streams from multiple, multiple vehicles at the same intersection. And 
And also we attach uh, not only attach sensors onto each vehicles, and we also uh, in, in attach sensors on, on, on the roadside unit uh, to achieve both vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to intersection uh, collaborative perception. So our data set has multiple recordings from both uh, vehicle and the uh, roadside unit. And we have multimodality sensors, including RGB camera uh, and 3D LiDAR and GPS and IMU. And we provide semantic labels, 3D bounding boxes, uh, and, and, and depths uh, and ground truth depths uh, to enable the uh, perception research because we need, we need some ground truth labels uh, to supervise uh, our, to supervise the perception models training. And in simulation, it is, uh, it is quite cheap to uh, obtain such kind of ground truth. And this uh, video shows our data set uh, in the bird's eye view and in the top-down view. And each color uh, denotes the environments from uh, different uh, vehicles. And the orange boxes denotes the uh, moving, uh, the dynamic uh, vehicles at this intersection. And after uh, generating such kind of data, data set, uh, we can verify our results, uh, verify our method. And our method uh, learning distilled collaboration graph, uh, which is uh, which named as uh, DiscoNet. You can see that our, our method achieves the best performance compared to other intermediate methods. And here, when to come and we have better performance than this intermediate collaboration method. And we can, uh, we also have uh, we, we, our method uh, can also uh, uh, try uh, can also try to approach the performance of the early upper bound, which is based on the early collaboration. But there is still a, uh, there is still a space for the improvement. And uh, compared uh, compared to other different collaboration strategies, like uh, we can just sum the feature maps from different agents or we can uh, use maximum uh, collaboration or the concatenation uh, collaboration. We have the best performance uh, when we equipped with knowledge distillation framework. And also we have the lar largest improvement uh, if equipped with knowledge distillation. And now let me show you some interesting realization results. And here, uh, this figure, in this figure, uh, the green boxes you know the ground truth box. And the red box it denotes the predictions. You can see that for the lower bound, which there are, uh, uh, there is no uh, collaboration. And the uh, in the left bottom corner, since there is no measurements for this vehicle, right? So the vehicle can uh, hardly perceive the these uh, these bunny boxes, right? Because it, it has no measurements, so it is uh, impossible for the agent for the algorithm to. Uh, calculate the uh, to compute the bounding box at that at that corner. And here now uh, we have another agent, agent two, right? Agent one needs to aggregate the information from agent two, and agent two can perceive this range well. You can see that it has a lot of measurements uh, located in, in this in this corner. In this uh, yellow circle, right? And then. Uh, in our let's say our age weight, and for the age weight uh, from agent one to agent one, which means it's self weight uh, during weighted sum fusion, the age the equal agent also need to uh, weight its own message. So during its uh, in its self age weight, uh, it will lower its confidence. Uh, right here, the bright uh, the darker color denotes the uh, lower value, and the brighter color denotes the higher value. You can say that because agent one cannot see the left bottom corner and it will lower its confidence in this range. And uh, for the age weight from agent two to agent one, which means that the agent one needs to uh, fuse the agent two's information, right? Because agent two can see uh, such kind of uh, range. And so the, in the age weight, it will highlight these pixels, these pixels, you can see that uh, this uh, spatial range is complementary and it can provide complementary information for agent one, right? So that after collaboration, you can see that our method can perceive uh, several of uh, these four bunny boxes located in the left bottom corner. 
And, and here is another uh, visualization example. And you can see that uh, in the top part, uh, the ego vehicle cannot perceive any measurements due to the occlusion. And so in its self age weight, it will lower the confidence uh, at this part. Similarly, the bottom part, uh, in the bottom part, it also has no measurements. So it will uh, also uh, reduce these uh, confidence values in, in these pixels. And agent two has uh, good observations in this uh, green circle. So for the agent uh, for the age weight from agent two to agent one, it can highlight the uh, the corresponding pixels. And we also uh, implement uh, compression uh, dimensionality reduction experiments. We try to further compress the feature maps of the intermediate uh, representation. And uh, we, we, we find that our method can achieve a better performance bandwidth trade-off. Okay, that's uh, for our first part, collaborative perception. And in summary, we propose uh, a novel distilled collaboration graph for multi-agent 3D detection. And in this graph, we use the matrix validate weight to highlight the informative range uh, and also mitigate the noisy range. And we also proposed a new data set with color small cost simulation. And we conduct the experiments to validate the effectiveness of our method. And uh, currently we, our ongoing work includes uh, develop a open source library for collaborative multi-agent perception. And this, in this library, we try to uh, offer some tutorials to, uh, to implement different collaborative strategies and also with different uh, single agent detection backbones. And uh, we also include, uh, we also try to include more tasks like uh, more perception tasks like uh, semantic segmentation and object tracking. And we try to make it an open source library so that uh, researchers uh, with, uh, with interest in these errors can utilize our library. And if you are interested and feel free to, uh, feel free to check our website and you can just Google core perception and try to uh, find the library uh, website. And we are still uh, still working on it. So it, uh, so this the current version might not be uh, complete, but we, we will try to continue to uh, improve our tutorial. And also if you have interest in uh, develop, developing such kind of tutorial and the library with us, you can also email me or email my advisor, Pro, uh, Professor Chen Fen, and we can talk about that definitely. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, okay, uh, so now let me uh, introduce the second part, adversarial perception. Uh, in this work, we propose to uh, propose a new uh, structure-based adversarial attack framework. Uh, and we try to review and overlook the vulnerability, which lies in the motion compensation process. And uh, for the background uh, here, the LIDAR perception is very critical for self-driving. And this is the, uh, we, have, we have introduced this before and uh, there are some many kinds of deep learning based LIDAR perception algorithms have been proposed. And uh, the, third, the third part is, uh, is that uh, deep learning is vulnerable to carefully design in perceptual per uh, perturbation. And this is quite uh, interesting in deep learning communities because uh, for the for 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 different models, it is vulnerable uh, to some carefully optimized, which is uh, which can attack the which can achieve achieve adversarial attacks of the corresponding different models. For example, in a two D image domain, here is the uh, here is the uh, an object, and when we optimize some kind of imperceptible uh, adversarial noise using gradient based methods, and when the when this image is added. Uh, with 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 such kind of noise, although it still looks like a panda for the human eyes, but for the deep learning algorithms, it will misclassify the uh, the animal, right? So this is quite interesting in the uh, in the in the deep uh, in the deep learning community.
and uh, and I see a question in the chat box. Yeah, we can get to it now or at the Q and A. But the the question is asking you if if you could highlight a few points on how to deal with multi sensors of different modalities yeah, when, yeah. with varied frame rates. Yeah, that's a very very nice uh, nice question. Uh, and uh, currently, we are focusing on the uh, single modality collaborative perception, and we, we focus on the three D point cloud modality. And uh, in the, in the next step, we try to involve more more, more modalities uh, like uh, cameras, uh, right? And uh, I think that's a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, but currently, we just focus on the uh, single modality collaborative perception. Yes, if you if you need uh, if you want to add more modalities and, and the system will become more complex and it requires uh, it, it requires more 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 investigations and we need to think about it. Yes, uh, let me uh, let me continue. Okay, so uh, such kind of uh, properties are quite interesting deep learning models, and uh, so researchers have proposed various algorithms. Uh, around the adversarial learning in computer vision, and for the three D computer vision, and some researchers propose uh, uh, propose some framework to attack to the point cloud uh, point point cloud uh, classifier. For example, it proposed adversarial point perturbation or generation to uh, to miss uh, to make the point cloud classifier misclassified corresponding objects. And basically, its idea is that uh, try to uh, use some very imperceptible, uh, imperceptible perturbation. Apply such, uh, apply some imperceptible perturbation onto several key points, and then the uh, deep learning models will uh, misclassify the corresponding object. And also, uh, very interestingly, uh, the Uber uh, autonomous driving group they have proposed some uh, scene level point cloud attacker. This they, they carefully designed some adversarial object and which can be uh, put on the top of the corresponding vehicles and, and this vehicle could be invisible to the uh, deep learning based 3D of that detection. And also there are some uh, sensor attack and they, they, use, they utilize some physical based methods uh, to strategically inject the points into the scene. For example, they just inject, uh, they just inject some points uh, 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 which, which located in the critical parts, for example, uh, which is uh, in front of the car, so that the cars will uh, thought that there will there, there is an object uh, in front of it, right? And so that it will have some uh, dangerous drive, driving behaviors, which can hurt the uh, safety of the passenger. And uh, our method is that different from the uh, previous methods, which try to manipulate the, the uh, point, each, each individual point's coordinate. Uh, we try to propose a trajectory-based perturbation method. And our key observation is LIDAR points are functions of sensor trajectory. You can see that in this vehicle, uh, it illustrates such kind of uh, motion distortion uh, scenarios because when the LIDAR is rotating to, to capture the measurements of different uh, spatial ranges, uh, uh, it, the, the car is still moving, right? So the sensor, is, so the sensor attached on, onto the car is also still moving. Uh, so that the different measurements uh, are captured actually at different locations. And finally, you need to use your uh, location information, uh, such as uh, you, basically the local localization systems uh, fuse the, uh, is based on the GPS system. And you need to use, utilize such kind of GPS trajectory to uh, make all these measurements in a unified coordinate so that it can uh, remove such kind of motion distortion. And then, uh, most uh, most uh, methods focusing on the uh, distortion-free point cloud, which means that it just treat the scene level point cloud uh, as a function of the coordinate. But uh, our obs observation is that actually the LIDAR points uh, can be treated as a differentiable functions of the sensor trajectory. And here, here P denotes a set of points, uh, which is covers the uh, full view, full 360 degree view. And this, uh, this uh, full view is divided into different sectors, which is denoted by, uh, which, which means that they are captured at different uh, locations. And here, the T denotes a vehicle trajectory, and it is a set of the transformation matrix. And here, PN denotes the corresponding LIDAR packet. 
And so this function means that uh, for each LIDAR packet is captured at a certain trajectory point so that uh, when we aggregate all these points, all these uh, uh, points captured at different locations, we can have a final a full view point cloud, right? So uh, after get such kind of representation, our uh, intuition that can we, uh, instead of manipulating each uh, uh, point coordinate to achieve adversarial attack, can we manipulate the trajectory, uh, which is uh, physically reliable uh, uh, to, 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 to achieve the adversarial attack of the, uh, of the 3D perception? Because uh, the sensor vehicle trajectories uh, could be easily perturbed by spoofing GPS signals. And, and so that we can full LIDAR perception where adverse trajectory perturbation, we can try to uh, intentionally uh, optimize some imperceptible noise onto the trajectories. And we try to, let the, uh, let the, let try to change the point cloud so that the deep learning model will be, uh, will be Will be will be fooled by such kind of imperceptible trajectory perturbation. So to achieve such kind of method, uh, we need to uh, we first need such kind of data set. But however, in the current uh, perceptual data sets like PT or new things, they all use the uh, distortion frame point cloud, which means that they just have finished the the motion distortion um, distortion correction uh, using their corresponding GPS information and. However, um, we can try to simulate such kind of motion distortion and compensation, right? Because we already know that, uh, for example, we already know that frame A has its own full view uh, degree of uh, full view of point cloud. And we also know its next frame is frame B, right? We know the corresponding pose, uh, the corresponding six degree of freedom pose of the frame A and frame B. And we can, uh, we can try to consider the, uh, the frame, the frame maze point cloud is captured at different locations, uh, different trajectory points onto the trajectory, which is uh, which is from A to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to which is from frame A to frame B, right? So that we can, uh, we, we assume that the vehicle is moving smoothly, right? And then we interpolate N steps between frame A, frame A and frame B so that we can get, uh, we can get N, and more uh, poses, right? And then we can sub, uh, we can divide the point cloud at frame A into n lidar packets. And each lidar packet denotes a sector, and it means that here the sector zero is uh, captured at the frame A, and sec uh, sector one is captured at frame one, and sector two is captured at frame frame two. And we also know the corresponding pose of different uh, sectors. And these poses are we, we are simulated by our interpolation, and and so uh, by such kind of simulation we can we can simulate such kind of uh, motion distortion data set. You, you can see that here uh, P denotes the uh, point cloud at frame A, and it is aggregated from the different lidar packets uh, P N and PN denotes the uh, letter packet captured at different trajectory points. And we also uh, know the trajectory T uh, because we simulate such kind of trajectory uh, by the interpolation. And compared to the coordinate-based adversarial uh, attack, our method has several advantages. For, uh, first one is physical feasibility uh, because uh, we, uh, the GPS spoofing is a well-studied error, although we are not expert, uh, expert in that error, but uh, we have do some literature survey and we found that the GPS spoofing can be easily achieved. And second one is we have better transferability because uh, our 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 adversarial perturbation can can be uh, can even be transferred across frames. And for the coordinate based uh, adversarial attack, uh, because the, uh, the 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 numbers of points is changing across frames, so it is hard to transfer the uh, coordinate perturbation across frames. But since our trajectory-based perturbation, we have uh, uh, we have the same dimension, uh, of, uh, same dimension for the trajectory perturbation, so that it can be transferred across frames. And also, uh, the most important one is that we have better attack performance due to the novel parameterization. Uh, for example, for uh, for the coordinate-based uh, attack, it just try to attack single individual point, right? So uh, we can only manipulate its x, y, z coordinate. But uh, for each sector. 
since we have uh, implemented such kind of grouping, and we can uh, consider the, the sec each sector, each LIDAR packet as a, uh, as a rigid body, right? So that we can attack its orientation parameters. And so uh, in addition to the translational parameters, now we, we have a novel orientational parameters. So uh, we can have a better attack performance uh, because uh, uh, we can have better attack performance in, in our uh, gradient-based adversarial attack framework. And now let me introduce our adversarial learning objective. And given a perception loss, uh, which means here it means that uh, uh, L denotes the uh, detection loss and the F, uh, F is our deep learning model. And it takes the point cloud as input, right? And our point cloud here is now a differentiable uh, function of the trajectory, trajectory T. And here Y denotes the ground truth labels. Uh, which means that the ground truth bounding boxes at each frame, and now we try to uh, we try to maximize the perception loss, right? Because the uh, the adversarial adversarial attackers are trying to uh, fool the de detector, so it is try to uh, maximize the perception loss, which is also uh, means uh, meaning that minimize the the negative uh, perception loss. And in order to make our uh, perturbation imperceptible, uh, we implement uh, also uh, regularizations on our uh, trajectory. And here, here, uh, our, uh, here this delta means the uh, adversarial perturbations, and we will try to uh, optimize such kind of perturbations. And we will also, uh, we also add a smooth perturbation regularization to try to make it very smooth, very imperceptible. And then we use the projected graded descent on the uh, perturbation. And after, uh, after our optimization, we can get a very, uh, uh, after several iterations, we can get a very imperceptible uh, trajectory perturbation. And uh, in order to make our perturbation uh, highly smooth, we also implement a, 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 a polynomial, uh, in, polynomial interpolation polynomial parameterizations. And I will show you the performance later. And lot of, let me show you some experiment re experimental results. And here uh, is the, our adversarial attack results uh, in the white box attack. White box attack means that uh, the deep learning models, uh, uh, the, the, the adversaries learn, uh, knows the, uh, the parameters of the white box uh, of the corresponding attack, attack to deep learning models. And you can see that uh, we, we have, uh, we have the, our method which only attacks the translational uh, parameters and orientational parameters. And also we have a full trajectory, which means that we attack both translational and orientational parameters. Uh, you can see that uh, with more parameters attacked, uh, there will be more false positives. You can see that here, red boxes denotes the predictions and the green box denotes the ground truth. And here is uh, more results. And we have, we have, we can see the similar find, findings. And we also uh, conduct a transferability test, which means that we use the adversarial perturbation learned in the white box model. And we transfer that kind of perturbation onto a black box model, which means that we do not know the parameters of the corresponding different models. And we just uh, utilize uh, such uh, the, the perturbation learned by others onto the black box model. You can see that uh, here, the, also the predictions means, uh, de is denoted by the red boxes and the ground truth is denoted by the uh, green boxes. Here, the left video denotes the original detections and the right, the right video denotes the uh, detections after the attack. You can see that there are uh, many boxes, many red boxes are lost. And now let me show you uh, our polynomial based attack. And uh, our polynomial uh, parameterization is that instead of uh, manipulate each trajectory point individually, we try to Firstly, you can conduct the polynomial uh, interpolation to make it uh, uh, to make the trajectory perturbation as uh, three other uh, polynomial functions, and then we try to 
uh, manipulate the poly polynomial coefficients of the corresponding function. And so, uh, so that we can achieve such kind of very smooth trajectory perturbation, right? Uh, here is the polynomial trajectory perturbation visualized in the 3D Euclidean space. And so this kind of uh, trajectory, uh, trajectory smoothness can also be reflected on, on the, uh, on, uh, in the point cloud space. You can see that uh, the left figure is the original point cloud with the original predictions. And after the full trajectory attack, uh, here is the, our uh, discrete setting, which means that we are manipulating each individual trajectory point. And you can see that there is a, a small difference between these two point clouds, right? And uh, this, this difference can be uh, differentiated by the human eyes. However, after implementing such kind of polynomial uh, co uh, coefficient, and these two point clouds is almost the same because uh, we implement the, uh, we, 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 force, we enforce the uh, perturbation uh, we, and we enforce a very smooth perturbation. So the sectors, uh, so the neighboring sectors, uh, their trajectory perturbation is almost the same, right? And so that uh, this can be reflected in the point cloud space, which means that these two point clouds looks like the same point cloud. However, the detection is quite different, right? You can see that here, this, this box is missed by the detector. And also this box is also, um, is also missed uh, by the detector. And here are some quantitative results. And you can see that we can uh, almost uh, fully for the detection models. You can see that uh, the detection precision is nearly zero. Okay, in summary, uh, in this work, we propose the uh, simple and effective method for the motion distortion and correction simulation. And we propose a novel representation uh, for scene level point cloud, which is based on trajectory. And uh, based on this kind of representations, we propose the generic and feasible trajectory based uh, adversarial attack pipeline against LiDAR perception. And we hope this uh, finding can, uh, can, uh, can raise the attention of the communities uh, to uh, to and try to uh, and we are also still trying to design more defense algorithms against such kind of attack in order to make the, improve the uh, safety and robustness of the perception system. Okay, I think uh, that's all for today, and thank you very much for your listening. You mean thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation today. It was very interesting. Um, so we're just about out of time, but we have time for one or two questions. If you have any questions, I encourage you to get them in as soon as you can. Um, yeah. We have we have one question. Um, yeah. So uh, have you thought about expanding this work to uh, to other road users, such as trucks, bikes, or uh, pedestrians? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a very, uh, very good question. And actually, uh, uh, the a V2X communication denotes the vehicle to everything communication, right? And so this, uh, this everything can also involve both vehicles, roadside unit and pedestrian uh, trucks. And uh, however, for, such, for our simulation, we only have the, uh, we, we can only simulate, uh, simulate the vehicles. And, and I, I believe in the future, if we can simulate, uh, simulate more, more elements such as pedestrians in, in our scene, we can actually try to uh, try to try to uh, uh, think about that that direction. Okay, and uh, I guess final question, unless another one or two comes in in time. Um, so, can you tell us again a little bit more about what you're working on right now and why you're excited about it? Okay, uh, currently uh, we we are still uh, for the first part of collaborative perception. Uh, we are working on the uh, the open library development, and we try to. Uh, open source all our, uh, all our models, intermediate models, and we also try to support more tasks. And we, also, we are also developing a tutorial to utilize our library so that uh, the researchers can, uh, can, can utilize our library more easily, right? So that they can, this can help, uh, help uh, the other, other researchers' uh, uh, research works. And for the adversarial perception part, and we are, we are trying to uh, propose some adversarial defense algorithms against such kind of uh, trajectory-based attack. And 
And I think that's uh, two of my ongoing projects, ongoing works. Okay, great. Iming Lee, yeah, thank you thank very you. much for, for joining us. Thank you for presenting today. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. Take care.